All right, we're recording. What is up, everyone? Uh, me and Messin are currently in a live trade right now. We just thought we'd record just for shits and giggles here, just kind of talk about our trades. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. I'm fuck. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm in a Bitcoin short right now. You're in a Link short. Is that yeah, all right? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Why do I ask questions that I don't know the answer to? I think it's a form of uh, self-reassurance, you know. Really? Okay. Yeah. I was leaning more towards like for the audience, but yeah, 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 no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Oh. So just for me real quick. So yeah, I think uh what do you think's going to happen here? Um So yeah, I'm basically in a in a link short right now just following Bitcoin. Um I think Bitcoin ultimately is going to drop to the 11,300 uh within the next uh you know, whatever time I guess soon, but I think that's uh, that's that's where the next stop is. A lot more, a lot more demand, a lot more supply right now. Not a lot of people want to buy it, um, but we see a huge wall at the eleven three hundred at the moment. So I would say if we're gonna drop, we're gonna drop somewhere down there. Uh, but to me, I'm just in in, in a link trade right now, uh, and that's kind of just the hopes that that's following suit with what's Bitcoin doing just in terms of uh, uh, getting a bit more uh, leverage, I would say, or uh, ROI. Yeah. I hear you. Also, too, like, uh, looking at the 1 and 5 here, the 11,400 is very price reactive for, uh, for Bitcoin. And in my mind, we seem to have gotten rejected. Uh, in the near term, further attempts to break up uh, made lower highs. So I think this is ultimately going down as well. Uh, and again, like Messi was saying, in the order books, there seems to be a large buying power at 11,300. Uh, so we'll see if we, if we drop. If so, it's you know, I'll make it like a cool 0.7%. Yes, sir. Yeah. What, what kind of are you targeting right now for, for Chainlink? Like if it does go your way? Um, I think the first stop is going to be uh, $10.70, which is at almost uh, uh, 0.5%. But I think the more Bitcoin is going to drop, I think uh, the better exit price. And I think ultimately where we're going to head to is $10.60. Yeah, I hear you. Um, That's where we're going to go down to. Also, our, our, 200, or sorry, our 100 EMA is right there at the 1070, so that makes sense too. Because uh, even uh, yeah, sorry. yeah, and plus plus even besides that, like if I'm looking at, uh, I think we're at a B correction right now. We're heading to after like a, uh, okay, I don't know if you can even see what I'm doing, but uh, one, so one, two, three, four, five. I think we just hit our fifth week. Same thing with Bitcoin, and uh, yeah, I think there's a massive. Uh, I think there's a drop coming sometime soon. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we all got in the a near future. We all got a little sneak peek of you there. I, I switched over to your stream to see if uh, what you were recording. So we got a, that was messing y'all. Show him, show him away. Yeah. All right. This is, uh, this is messing. Right here. In the flash. We're not just uh, cartoon astronauts behind a, in front of a moon. The moon. Ah oh, man, this is where money's being made. This is the this is the battle station right here, the main cockpit. This is where millions are made. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of true though. Um, you know, um, since we're just kind of waiting around for shit to happen here, let's maybe just talk about what, like our Bollinger Band strategy that we've been trying. Well, you know, that we've been uh, you know eyeing out here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, why don't you start off with like the uh, differentiation? Because uh, you, you know that better than I do. 
So like the the two different Bollinger bands there. No, well, um, well, just a, just in general. I mean, like for for whoever doesn't know, you know, I, I guess there's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, people who noticed here that uh, in general the. Uh, but just by looking at the comments, I think that to certain people, what we say is actually uh, too simplistic. Uh, for others, they actually find more uh, more knowledge from it. So this is more for beginner level uh, Bollinger Bands, or just in case you don't know what Bollinger Bands is. But in general, statistically speaking, um, uh, when you take an average, if you have a, a lot of um, a lot of data. Your average doesn't really fully represent what the uh, what your uh, data is. Um, in general, standard deviation is where you will find a, a better representation of that uh, of the majority of your data values, and you can pick intervals of where uh, either 65 percent or 90 percent of your your price uh, falls in, and uh, with a, if it's above or below. And that's what basically Bollinger Bands does. It just gives you uh, basically a band, the upper level and the lower level, and then you got the median in the middle. The median is your your average price for the past uh, 20 candles. Uh, upper band is uh, you can you can uh, pick whatever interval you want. But if you use the two two standard deviation, then uh, you are ensuring that. Your uh, it's giving you a uh, limit to where for the past 20 candles, uh, almost 65% of your uh, price range was fluctuating within this band right here. So it kind of gives you a better gauge of where you should enter and exit and all that stuff. So there's a lot of strategies to Bollinger Bands in general. The more the deeper you get into it, you'll see uh, it's actually uh, a very, uh, very uh, well-known uh, strategy of uh, Picking your entry and exit points the proper way for shorting or longing, and uh, yeah, it just gives you a better gauge, a better, more precision to your trades, and you actually, if you enter a trade, give you a lot more confidence when it comes to uh, not rushing in, uh, knowing exactly where you know what. Well, based on this Bollinger band, my price is uh, not really as soon as hitting this upper level here or this lower level here. I know. That 90% of the time it will be contained within this band, so this is probably a good entry for me to short or to long, depending on where you enter at. Um, but yeah, I mean, ever since we started using it in general, it's been giving us uh, um, uh, a bit more guidance. Uh, our trades are definitely more um, uh, precise, I would say, and uh, just overall, it just gives you a level of comfort that. You know the candles on their own won't give you, or the moving averages on your own, on their own can give you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. And um, you know, just to kind of like talk about like a little bit more about how this is, how or at least we've been trying to implement this is like when we have these two overlay Bollinger bands together, but one being uh, the standard deviation of three and the other being of of two. Uh, basically, whenever the price goes in between we know that it'll typically be rejected off that so you can kind of shoot yeah. in long those peaks and that's kind of what we've been trying to do like for example like we're looking at my, you know I, I know you can't see my screen but just real quick um because in the recording they can uh here it was very you know we see how it pumped here and it was in between the three and the two here uh, on the uh, bollinger band like our different bollinger bands here with a different standard deviation uh in a dumped afterwards you know this would have been like a shorting opportunity and over here would have been a logging opportunity and so on and so forth. And that's, um, you know, hopefully we, we make at least a little bit of sense. Uh, I mean, we're, we're still trying so to understand this. Sorry, I'm sorry to cut you off. Sorry to cut you off, but we're dropping here, buddy. Oh, yeah. Bitcoin yeah. and Link. But yeah, anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, for Link. I think Link is forming like a in the near term, like in the super near term, either some kind of triangle or wedge where if we break down. I mean, I don't know how really... How these, these like descending triangles, descending triangles, or, or how really helpful they are in like such small like near macro scales, but yeah, I, I think we're breaking down as well.
Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to take in right now. I think the market's uh, really uh, there's a huge battle right now between the bears and the, and the bulls here. But uh, just in terms of the price, so for even for forget about supply and demand at the moment. Just in terms of price range right now, we reached the. Uh, we did test the 400, and usually, from looking back here, I don't know if they can see your screen, but every time we're hitting that level, we're really dropping heavy. So, oh yeah, I think this is a good. Uh, I think uh, we're, 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 we'll definitely have a at least a two percent drop here, if anything. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, another thing too that you can see on my screen here, uh, on my screen here, uh, on the five-minute chart, uh, Bitcoin. Is below the median on our Bollinger Bands, which is bearish. So that's another positive. Even on the one minute, if you can see, it's uh, touched the bottom uh, of the uh, Bollinger Band. That's Bitcoin, and it's, it's not respecting it. It's not finding that support. So it's just kind of telling us that. Uh, uh, Right now, it's a, the price action is a lot more dominant than the Bollinger Band, and uh, uh, just kind of confirming more our our downtrend at the moment. Yeah, and even just to I see the bulls, the, the bears, the bears right now definitely control it. I agree, and just to bring it back to like even more a little bit more macro factors here, just the fact that we got rejected off the eleven thousand four hundred is extremely bearish. I mean, we both agree that like. Um, we we can clearly see how price reactive eleven thousand four hundred is. Every time we tried to break it, we got rejected hard, and we did so again, got rejected. And in the near term, if we look at our pump, uh, we had like a second attempt that also got rejected. So, um, yeah, this this seems fairly bullish. You know, like we're I'm targeting like the mess I'm saying like eleven thousand three hundred basically. Yeah, I might take half of my profits uh, half to do. Uh... Maybe at a seven, zero point, like a point seven drop here. Um, I don't know, it just depends on my like gauge and see how. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, s since they can see uh, my screen here, I'm just going to talk about how, like, on the minute chart, we also see when the price action went in between our uh, two Bollinger Bands here. You know, this is basically a signal for shorting opportunity uh, because whenever the price action goes near the top of the Bollinger Bands, we typically uh, break down, um, and that's what we saw happen, so. Oh yeah, Chainlink's breaking down, eh? Oh, Bitcoin's also just broke down again. It's just keep breaking those walls. There's no way the, uh, there's no way those uh, walls, the, 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 the bids basically are, are holding this up. The only thing, the only thing that I can see holding this whole thing up is, is literally the wall at eleven three hundred. There, I don't know if the if, if uh, they can see your screen there, but on Bitcoin, uh, it's definitely there's uh, it's very small buy walls going down. Now there might be hidden ones and all that, but just for whatever we can see here, it looks like the eleven three hundred is where we're heading next. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like uh, we're looking at the five minute on my end, and we see there's just a bunch of sideways uh, movement for you know past uh, two three days here, and every time we went to the eleven thousand four hundred, got rejected, we fell down. So, I mean, man, there's even a chance we can like fall down further, like eleven thousand two hundred fifty. Like if we see that on your yeah. end, that's also a pretty significant price target. Um, that's on eleven two eighty as well. Because we've been we've been testing. We've been text, uh, testing the 11,300, 400 range, and it didn't look like we're going up any time. It's just it's, it's been stuck there since uh, since yesterday, and um, uh, uh, it just it just looks like the the it looks like we're going down for sure. I kind of hope uh, Chainlink breaks down some more. That way, I can add to my large holdings by the dip. There you go. Yeah, I don't even 
think the uh, it's almost the, hmm. even right now we're testing <coughs> we're testing the uh, ten dollar seventy cent wall there, and um, I don't even think that's gonna hold. To be honest, it looks like we're just chipping away at it, and it's not really gonna. Yeah, I think that's uh, we're going down, buddy. It's gonna be a good short. Yeah, it'd be nice to get a profitable uh, trade in. <laughs> <laughs> For the, I feel like we uh we should give a little bit of an update with our with our trading challenge. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot of definitely a lot of learning experience. Yeah, it's, it's been a learning experience, definitely, guys. So for those of you, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep going back. <laughs> All right, I'll speak to myself oh, my very God. briefly. I feel like a, a little bit of an explanation is, uh, so uh, for those of you who've been with the channel for a little while, you, maybe you've seen how we had like this trading competition a month so you can double our money. Well, I lost like half of my account. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing was, man. We, we were, too, uh, me too. Same thing. Yeah. We, we did very well the first like three, four Bro, trades. we had man. three or four good solid trades we were feeling confident and honestly we spoke about this and i think it was because we were like feeling confident that we got sloppy we didn't stick really to our stop losses we, we really weren't going after like high probability setups uh you know oh yeah yeah so yeah so we you know we uh, I, think I think the main thing was we the main thing was we uh so we had a couple or three three good trades uh, minimum i would say 10 12 percent and uh we got a little cocky there and we kind of broke out of our uh the, the rules basically our stop losses yeah. and all that yeah. we were trading without any stop losses but that was a that was a good lesson to learn definitely we just had to go back to the drawing board i lost my money too and not even that i was i jumped I mean, you actually. We jumped almost to. Uh, to uh, we were up by fifty percent. We're so close, yeah. but. Yeah, like. Yeah, we just yeah. didn't maintain it properly. So now this is kind of teaching us a lesson. Exactly, like you know, I was trading leveraged, and I wasn't sticking to my stop losses. I, I would let it ride because, um, you know, I thought it was gonna go down eventually, and eventually. I was in these, these trades for days and uh, like two or three days. I think I was like in a Bitcoin short, some stupid shit. And I should have just fucking cut. Yeah, I ended up losing maybe like, I don't know, maybe five, seven, ten percent. It was something like that. You know, it, it was uh, so traumatizing. I, and I try to block it out of my mental memory. So I don't exactly remember how much I lost, but it was leveraged, guys. So you know, leverage losing seven percent is quite a bit. And it just took two or three trades like that for me to not only lose all my gains, but lose basically like half of my account. Um, so, yeah, after that, I took, uh, I took a little bit of a break. Off trading a few days, and then uh, and then me and Mess have been kind of talking about you know better strategies and like learning some more, and then we stumbled upon like this uh, this Bollinger Band strategy where we kind of uh, you know change up the, the settings on our Bollinger Bands and uh, basically whenever price action goes in between the two short or long uh, uh, on whatever end, yeah. and we've been trying to kind of follow that I'm um, you know more or less. Uh, also, just the the price action on on Bitcoin and uh, damn, and Chainlink. Uh, first of all, Chainlink and Bitcoin act very similarly, so um, you know the, the the just the price action as well look look good to uh, to short. So that's why we're shorting. Yeah. I mean, it seems like we're both in profit so far. I mean, things could change, but yeah. No, I think uh, gotta figure out where I want to get out of this trade. Oh, uh, Bitcoin is finding support on our 50-day EMA. I do not like to see that. By the way, if anyone is uh, is uh, still listening to this, leave down in the comments what coins you want us to look at. If you want us to do technical analysis, if you, technical analysis, if you have questions. Uh, you know, if you have uh, some, you know, uh, you know, recommendations for coins you want us to check out, it's always good to have, um, you know, uh, more topics to do videos on. I kind of, um, 
I kind of wanted to stick to the putting out a video every day, but at the same time, I, I only want to put something out if I have something to talk about. So there have been a few days where like one or two days where I didn't put anything out. But that's, you know, if I, if I put something out, I don't want to just be for no reason. Just I don't want to just talk just for the sake of speaking. I want to put something out if I have something to say. So, you know, do you guys have recommendations for coins you want us to do TA on? Put in the comments. Yes, sir. Man, I feel like I gotta stop harassing people about cryptocurrency, like normal people in my personal life. <laughs> like every time I talk to someone. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, like, because we're so passionate about this. Yeah, but normal people would think we're fucking weird. I mean, we are, or I am, but. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. But man, this is the fucking move, though. Like, if we're right about this shit, like, I'm, you know, I, I hold some long term bags as well as, uh, you know, a tr I have a day trading account as well. Um, but if I'm right about this shit, you know, I could, uh, you know, potentially do do well. It's okay, man. When, when you, you know, <clears throat> when you stop going to work and they wonder well, how you're paying your bills and all that, uh, it's going to make sense to them. Yeah, man. Eventually, this could really be some, so we'll keep at it. Okay. You want to keep recording or what? I mean, we can cut this whenever, man. Uh, yeah. Why don't we just like, yeah, we'll we can do something more once you know some more shit goes on. But yeah, I think it's I don't know. It's pretty much shit for me for now. Maybe just mark it, just just mark at the video right now and just cut it. I guess we can cut it easy. All right, peace, y'all.